There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, and on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know everything I need you got. There's honey in the rock. Thirsty for the living way. Only you can satisfy. Sweetness at the mercy seat. I've tasted, and it's not hard to see. And only you can satisfy. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone. Man on the ground. I don't need to worry now that I know Everything I need you got You can start in the rock, put this in your pain Power in the blood, healing in your hand Start it flowing when you said that it's done Oh, everything you did is enough There's honey in the rock Subtitle in the New King James is Christ, the power and wisdom of God. Now, one of the greatest revelations I had after I became a Christian was this. That God gives wisdom without reproach. What does that mean? Well, another translation says it this way. God gives wisdom without finding fault. In other words, what I did yesterday has nothing to do with what I'm seeking in Him today. He's not going to say, well, Billy, you know what? When you get it right, then I may give you some wisdom. You know, you just really need to straighten up before I pour any more love on you. No, that's not who God is. He's a God that loves without condition. There's nothing I can do to make God love me any more or any less. Think about that for a moment. That's a beautiful picture of who God is, isn't it? Amen. It doesn't matter what I do. He's not going to love me any less or any more. Amen? Amen. Amen. Alright, 1 Corinthians start in verse, uh, chapter 1, starting in verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is the power of God. Do you hear that, church? If you're in that category of those being saved, if you've been born again, if you're working out your salvation with fear and trembling, guess what? The power of God lives in you and through you. When you say yes to Jesus, you're part of the family. It's just like the workers. I'm going to paraphrase, right? Workers in the field. Guess what? Those guys have been busting their tails all day long. These cats come in at the last part of the day. They got the same pay, baby. It's all for you. Whether you started walking last week or you've been walking your whole life. Now, he does say to each man, he gives a measure of faith. What are you going to do with that faith? What are you going to do with it? You're going to walk in it? Or are you going to put it aside and use it when, it when it's necessary? When it's convenient? On Wednesdays and Sundays? Are you going to get up and say, Lord, what is it today you want me to do? What do we get to spend your money on today, Lord? Lord, what do we get to use your resources for? It's all about you, Lord. What do we get to do? I'm going to tell you something. You start doing that every day, Get ready. God's going to move. And it probably won't even be anything like you expect. He's going to do things in you because He's called something greater than yourself. Yes. Yeah. He didn't create you for you. That's right. He created you for Him and others. That's why the two greatest commandments are what they are. He just didn't, you know, well, eh, those sound good. No, we're to love God with every ounce that we are. But God didn't call you to, to believe me. He called you to believe Him. See, God wants you to read the Word. 
God wants you to walk worthy of the calling in Christ Jesus. Not walk like Billy walks or Andrew walks or Max walks. That's not your call. Your call is to walk worthy of the calling He has in you in Christ. That's what the Word says. It's a beautiful thing to recognize the Christ in you. John the Baptist says, I must decrease so Christ can increase. Now in that context, he's talking about his ministry, but that is relevant in our lives. It can't be all about Billy and no room for Christ. It has to be about Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through the Son. I don't care what Oprah says. The Bible makes it clear. But so many movements, so many people today have watered down the Gospel to try to make another way. There's one way. One way. And His name's Jesus. The power of God in our lives, folks, is so important for us to understand. It doesn't. I don't have to be have a doctor's degree and whatever theology. Okay, no, that's cool, and, and and knowledge is good, but wisdom comes from above. Knowledge is a wonderful thing to have, but God wants to give us the wisdom that comes straight from Him. That's what we need to be seeking. Now we, we gain that by studying His Word, chewing on His Word. Man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. His Word is everything we need. It is the bread of life. And guess who the Word is? Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Colossians 1, start at verse 9. We're talking about the preeminence of Christ. From page 1 to the last page, He's the King of glory. Verse 9. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I want to stop right there. We need to ask the Father. See, we need to be praying in the power for those around us the same prayer. Let me read it again. I do not cease to pray for you and to of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. There's people who do not understand. And we need to be specifically praying that in those people's lives. That God will give them eyes to see, ears to hear, and a clear revelation of His goodness and who He is as the King. Verse 10, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, every good work, getting out of bed, driving to your job, walking through the hallways at work, coming home, sitting down at the dinner table. Everything matters. Everything is spiritual. Now a lot of people will disagree with that. But I'm going to tell you right now. It's all spiritual. Because if it's keeping you from fulfilling the purpose, there's something there that's spiritual. I'm, I'm not going that direction. That's for another time. <laughs> Verse 11. Strengthened with all might according to His glorious power for all patience and long-suffering with joy. Yes. Woo, man! Verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. It's ours. It's ours. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. 14. In whom we have the redemption, excuse me, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Lord, for the shedding of your blood. We are saved by the blood of the Lamb and the Word 
of our testimony. Amen. Testimonies are so important. And by the way, your testimony isn't always coming out of your mouth. It's when people watch how you walk every Amen. day. Yes, sir. That's your testimony. Alright, here we go. Hold on. He is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through Him and for Him. Whoo! And He is before all things. And in Him all things consist. And He is the head of the body. The church who is the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. That in all things He may have the preeminence. Boy, don't you know when Paul was pinning that, he had to take a moment and go, Wow! What just, what just come out of my fingertips? Think about what we just read, folks. The power of Christ lives in us and through us. It holds us together. It holds us together. That's one of, I mean, you can, you can take this several different directions because there's so much meat here, so many layers. But there's one thing that God says, do not forsake the assembly. Because when you detach yourself from the assembly, things happen. Yes. Things happen. And guess what? They're spiritual. And there's a war going on. And though the war may not be able to take your soul, but what it can do is distract you from fulfilling the purpose that God has for you. Really, that's the plan of the enemy. After salvation, he knows he can't grab you because that's the Word. But what he can do is put blinders up and distract you and keep you from doing what God has called you to do. Because if you're building your own kingdom instead of working on His, then you're going to be distracted. Not that He doesn't want you to be blessed and have nice things. See, those things come when you seek first the kingdom of God. He takes care of everything else. See, in Matthew 25, when they said, Lord, when did we do these things for You? They didn't even know they were doing them from Him. You know why? Because that's just what they do. I want you to think about that for a second. That's D. Lord, when did we see You? When did we do these things for You? It's how they roll, man. It's how they roll. Their lives wasn't about them. It was about others. And by the way, that's how they were identified. You know, one of our prayers as, as a, a couple in Christ is, Lord, bless us more so we can bless others. Lord, we want our cup to overrun, not where we can build bigger barns. So that overrunning will affect everyone around us. Lord, pour it out. Just let it pour and pour and pour. I don't, I don't need to know how much it's pouring. I'm asking God to give me a new measure of faith, just like I prayed earlier. And I, I think that should be all of our prayer. We, we all need a new measure of faith. Lord, every day, I must decrease so you can increase. Lord, I, I want more of you. I want more of faith. I want more faith. I want your word to be manifested in my life through me so people can see the goodness of God. Not because I know scripture or some people may think I'm smart. They, they don't know very many people if they do. But the fact is, they know that I'm blessed and highly favored. Yes. They're like, man, that guy. And it ain't nothing I did. It's everything about Him. Yes. It's everything about Him. And it's losing my life so I can find it. I, that, I, that's one of the most beautiful lines Jesus said in Scripture, I think. Before you can find your life, you must lose it. Amen. <laughs> okay, I get it, Lord. It's not my life. It's yours. Alright. 
Romans 1, if you're underlining your Bible, you may want to underline this one. We're going to start at verse 16. If I was going to get a tattoo, this would be one I wrote on there. Just 16. I wouldn't do the whole paragraph. <laughs> For I, make it personal. Make it personal. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. The power of God in our lives. The power of God in our lives. We've read three passages on the power of God. We've read a passage about Christ living in us, through us, and us being held together by Jesus Himself. Now you can dissect that any way you want to. Go to your strongs, take every word and break it apart. But it literally means He is holding us together. That the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Creator of everything good, He breathes stars into existence. Every 50 seconds, NASA says, they don't say God's doing it. They're just saying somehow these stars appear every 50 seconds. Where are they coming from? It's from a holy God. He says, look at me. You want revelation? Look for it. Because it's all around you. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, church. Father, I thank You for the increase, the measure of faith, Lord, that we all desire. God, if there's anyone in here who's struggling with that, Lord, just touch them. Touch their hearts, Lord, and help them see, God, that You are everything that we need to sustain life, the breath that we breathe, Lord, we are asking for something new. Not just in faith, but in revelation. We want to reach those who You want us to reach. The lost, the hurting, the sick, the poor, and the people who stole from us this week, Lord. Yes. We lift those people up and we ask that You show them Your goodness and allow us to show forgiveness God, that only You can show through us. You are a good God. Yes. And we are overwhelmed by Your beauty and Your majesty for Your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh,